My name is Manfred Helber and I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in the category Cloud and Data Center. This session will be a complete live demo session where we want to have a look at all the capabilities and all the features of virtual machine creation in Windows Admin Center for an Azure Stack HCI cluster. When you look back to the video modules where we deployed our Azure Stack HCI clusters, you have seen that we deployed three clusters, a two node cluster, a three node cluster, a four node cluster. For this virtual machine deployment actions, I will use the three node cluster. So I will use the Azure Stack HCI cluster 30. Before we start with the virtual machine creation and management itself, I will again address two important topics. The first thing is settings. And in settings, you remember we had the Azure Stack HCI registration. It's important because only if the cluster is registered and if the cluster was connected within the last 13 day, 30 days to Azure, we will be able to create new virtual machines. This is a requirement, but we prepared this in a previous video. What's also important, we have to think about how to activate the virtual Windows Server VMs. Because we have learned in the basic modules and the introduction modules that Azure Stack HCI does not include virtual usage rights. So we have decided to go for purchasing Windows Server subscription lights via Azure. Here I have first to update, install some updates on my cluster or to use existing Windows Server license. So we already have seen this option in a live demo. Here we have some updates that are not already installed. If I install these updates, I can use the Windows Server subscription option via Azure. The other option is to use an existing Windows Server license on premise. This means I have to add for each host a data center key. The perfect option is to purchase this server data center licenses via your OEM partner where you buy the servers. They can provide you a cost optimized OEM license of Windows Server data center and you can use this license keys you have bought with your server hardware here to enable these physical hosts to provide automatic virtual machine activation for the virtual machines. What's also important in the Hyper-V general settings, you have to ensure that your default path is suitable to your environment. When we configured this in the cluster deployment, I recommended you to refer to cluster storage, volume name, and to have a subfolder, my subfolder is VMs. Okay, let's start in this cluster. Let's go to virtual machines. And in the virtual machines, we can actually see this cluster is still in the status how I've left this cluster. So I don't have any virtual machines here actually. I can add virtual machines in creating new virtual machines or importing existing virtual machines. I will add new virtual machines. The new VM will be, let's create a 30, it's for my cluster 30, VM01. These are only demo VMs. So you will have your own naming convention here. Let's see what happens. I want to choose for a generation two. I assume you are familiar with the difference. The generation two is available since Windows Server 2012 R2. For sure, it's also available in Azure Stack HCI. For backward compatibility, we also have support for generation one VMs. We can select the host. We have one host recommended. It's the host 32. Let's see how this changes. We will create several VMs. My path is fine. It's the default path, the cluster storage volume one. I can browse for another path, but this is the path I want to know, use. Virtual CPUs two. I could enable nested virtualization. I don't want to use this for the virtual machine. Nested virtualization enables me to run Hyper-V inside this virtual machine. I can select for the processor compatibility or CPU compatibility. 
This is helpful if we have different CPU versions inside one cluster. I wouldn't recommend to configure a cluster with different CPU versions, but if you maybe extended a cluster in a later point of time and you have the situation your previous CPUs were not any longer available, then you can maybe have such a mixed configuration. And in this scenario, you can configure the processor compatibility. This means that the cluster checks if um, we have a compatible level of virtualization feature set within the cluster between all the CPUs. And so some of the CPU features are disabled to ensure that we have the full compatibility to live migrate. This is relevant for live migration to live migrate the virtual machine to any node in the cluster. Startup memory, I will choose the default value of one, uh, sorry, of two gigabytes. Dynamic memory could be minimum one gigabyte, maximum, let's say two gigabytes, something like this. Virtual switch, I like this virtual switch uh, thing not connected, it depends on your network configuration. I want to add a storage. I will have a new virtual hard disk. I can configure the size here. The default is a dynamic virtual hard disk with a dynamic size. And I want to install an operating system because I don't have any virtual machine image. We are starting from the crash. We deployed our cluster. Um, before and now we want to have virtual machines. Let's browse for an installation file. And I provided an installation file for us in the cluster storage volume one. I have an ISO share and I want to install Windows Server 2020 to the March update. Okay, let's select this file and now create the virtual machine. We have seen, seen this several times in Windows Admin Center. When we configure something in the graphical user interface, the selected values will be provided via a PowerShell script in the back end to the target system that the PowerShell script runs. And so it needs, needs some time till we see the result. Let's check the settings of this virtual machine. We have a settings here, depending on your screen resolution, maybe you have some arrow here at the end where you can click and then a drop down opens with the rest of the options. So if you are, I have a full HD um, resolution here, so 1980 to 1080 pixels. If you have less, it might happen that you have to dr drop down for settings and edit tags. Um, here in this resolution, everything is there. I will go to settings of this machine. And it's similar to what you know from Hyper-V Manager, if you are familiar with this previous tool. Hyper-V Manager is still available, but we want to focus on Windows Admin Center. Okay, we have the name of the virtual machine. We can add nodes. We have um, in the automatic start action, nothing. Uh, automatic stop action is a safe state. Um, automatic critical error action, pause on none. Minutes to wait before pausing the virtual machine is here. Then we have the memory settings. We have seen there was an advantage compared to the uh, traditional Hyper-V manager. The traditional Hyper-V manager, we could only say activate dynamic memory or not. Here we, here we could already specify the minimum and the maximum value. In the CPU settings or processor settings, we can decide for the virtual uh, processor amount. We can decide for the nested virtualization, the nested, uh, the processor compatibility. I explained this. What's important um, with the processor compatibility or, a, or CPU compatibility, we have two options. We can check if we want to have the compatibility across the cluster or if we have want to have the compatibility across the host with the same CPU manufacturer. So only between uh, Intel or only between AMD. Enable SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. As you remember, the costs for licensing of Windows Server and of Azure Stack HCI are based on the physical cores. So hyper-threading will provide us more flexibility and power without increasing the costs for the licenses. 
here with this SMT option, we have the advantage that we can provide more virtual CPUs to the virtual machine. So this is not the SMT setting for the host. This is the SMT setting for the virtual machine. Let's go to the disks. I don't want to change anything here. I could add additional hard disk drives, additional um, DVD drives. We have the network settings where I mentioned we don't want to configure any connectivity here at this point in time, but we can add additional network adapters, um, can add more network adapters, can go to the advanced settings where we have the switch between dynamic and static um, MAC address. We can configure the bandwidth management. So this is available here. Then we have the boot order. We can use this move up and down arrows to decide what's the boot order. This is fine for me. I could move down the network because I want to use the ISO file to boot from and the next time the, the DVD drive. So this is fine. We can manage checkpoints or C set checkpoints here. We can manage the checkpoint settings. This is the correct thing here. I could enable or disable checkpoints and I can decide if I want to use production or standard checkpoints. And we have the default checkpoint file location. The integration services, so we can decide for which integration service should be activated for this VM and which one not. I have a short explanation. Um, <clears throat> and the security settings are available here. I can enable the secure boot with a template for Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Wavy Certificate Authority or Open Source Shielded VMs. I could activate a TPM virtual IE. This is important if you want to run virtual Windows 11 virtual machines because they require TPM. Um, and we have the shielding for the machine. If we use shielding, we can see both options are also activated here because this is um, in correlation to each other. For shielding, we need an additional shielding um, yeah, infrastructure, uh, shielding capabilities. I don't want to change anything here. The affinity rules. Here we see the information showing only rules that apply to this virtual machine. To see all rules in a cluster, go to cluster settings, affinity rules. So it's in the settings and there we have the affinity rules. We can check this later. So I closed the settings for the machine. If I click on the machine itself, I will be, um, yeah, I will load the details page about the machine where I can see it stopped, I can see the host, I can see if I'm signed into Azure. So we will start the machine now and then see what happens here with the machine. So let's select this machine and we have several options. We have the add thing. We will connect to the machine in a few seconds. We have the power options in manage. We have things like move, clone, export, replicate, checkpoints, renaming, upgrade configuration version, delete. We will see a few of these features later. So let's power on this machine. I want to start this machine. The virtual machine is starting and I want to connect this machine when the machine is up and running. So let's refresh the screen here. So the machine seems to be stopped still here. But the message was, oh, it's starting the virtual machine, updating the cache, further actions are temporarily blocked for the machine. So I have some update action here and now the machine is running. So this is not typical that it takes so long. Um, you remember these clusters are based on virtual machines. So maybe I had some timeout state on one of the machines or something like this. So let's connect to this machine now. I can use the connectivity here. I want to automatically connect with the certificate provided. And now I can see, and this is a great functionality here in Windows Admin Center, I have access to this virtual machine within the web browser. So let's send a restart command via clicking on send, control, alt, delete. 
and the machine starts. I clicked in this fan, in this window, um, pressed any key on the keyboard, and now I can select for the language. I will choose time and currency format German, keyboard input method German, language to install United States. Let's go to next and install, and the installation runs with this in this virtual machine. Now in a few seconds, I have two or three additional parameters to specify. One is the product key. Um, here you would use the AVMA key for the virtual machine if you have enabled automatic virtual machine on your activation on your host. You will find this AVMA keys in docs.microsoft.com. The easiest way is to use a search engine to search for docs.microsoft.com and automatic virtual machine activation. I will specify here the English language version of this article and then we will see, okay, this is automatic virtual machine activation in Windows Server. I get a description here, I can see a description and here I can see the AVMA keys. This is not a secret, this is nothing forbidden here. These are public keys because they are only usable or helpful for me if I have automatic virtual machine activation on the hosts and I only can have automatic virtual machine activation on the hosts when I have um, yeah, purchased uh, data center licenses for each node and added the keys here. So I would provide this key here. You remember, I didn't activate my hosts for AVMA, so I'm only using them for demoing, for testing. So I will provide here the information. I don't have a key, it's not for production, it's only for testing. And I will select the standard desktop experience version. I want to install with a full graphical user interface here. I accept this, custom installation. So this is a default Windows Server installation. The specific thing is here that we are installing this machine on an Azure Stack HCI cluster. So the installation will take a few minutes. It depends on your resources you have for the virtual machine. It depends on your storage capacity, not on the capacity, but on the storage performance. So let's have a look at the list of the virtual machines. So the virtual machine list will show up in a few seconds. There we will see, oh, we have the machine, we have a memory pressure of 71%, memory demand is 727 megabytes, CPU usage is 21%. So let's wait a few minutes till the machine is installed completely. So let's look back to the virtual machine and let's reconnect to this machine again. Let's have a look at if this machine is maybe already ready for the next steps. So the connection to the machine is opened here. Now we can see the virtual machine is actually restarting. So it seems the setup has finished and the machine starts here for the first time and then it will provide the logon screen for the user for the local administrator typically here inside the virtual machine. Let's wait to finish this because I want to authenticate here or add password. So let's do it like this. Um, I want to keep this window here open so I will open a new tab of Windows Admin Center so I can switch between these two tabs. And I will go to this um, yeah, tab here. I have to authenticate again, use this for all connections. Okay, here I have my virtual machine connection. I want to authenticate with this new user here. And for sure, if the machine is running, we can change some th settings of this running virtual machine. 
some settings are grayed out. For example, we cannot change the number and the settings of the virtual GPUs. So let's check this. I want to select the machine. I will go to settings and here we can see the processor settings. Let's check what processor says. So this is not possible because some settings cannot be modified because the virtual machine is running. This is in Hyper-V, the similar situation we have here in Hyper-V in Azure Stack HCI. Memory, I could change because Hyper-V um, is very um, aware of um, hot out and remove memory. Sorry, I didn't remember we configured this machine with dynamic memory. There's not possible, but if we have a fixed size, we can change this on a running machine. For sure, we can add disk drives, this is possible running machine we can add network interface cards and for sure i can switch to my vm network here for the virtual machine default uh, isolation mode we have the advanced settings we have already seen this before but you remember when we created the vir virtual machine it was not connected to any network so we'll save the settings here When I go back to the virtual machine, I can see it's the default Windows Admin Center settings screen here. Let's maybe change the name of the machine here. The computer name should be an 30VM01. It's my cluster 30, it's the VM01. It's only a prefix to ensure that we um, don't have conflicts if we move virtual machines between clusters. So I can restart the machine. Then, then let's check some settings when the machine is back. I will log in again on this machine. So when the restart has finished, I will log in here. So send control, alt delete, log in with an administrative user. So here we can see the machine says, oh, I found a new network. It took a few seconds after the restart, after the, the log on here. Yes, this is fine for me. And I also could join this virtual machine for sure to my domain. Let's choose the domain or work group change here. Let's say this machine should be part of my domain, mhdmolab.de. Let's accept this. I have an administrator here with a password. I want to specify this. And now the machine is joined to my domain. And for sure, I can also manage this machine with Windows Admin Center now. I could provide Azure Monitor, Azure Backup for this machine, and so on. So the machine starts. We have seen the network settings of the machine. Let's go back to the virtual machines list. Because we want to create a second virtual machine. Let's create another new virtual machine. Let's create a new one. And here we can see now another host is recommended. The first machine, let's go back here. The first machine here, when we check, it should be possible to see this column here, to see the host server, sorry. It's the host server is already here. It should be visible to my list of attributes here. I want to remove this. Here is the host server. We have the name, yes, here. Sorry, I have it already here. Here's the host server, 32. It's already in the list, but if you want to specify additional columns, it's possible here. So I can add this column and select from one of these other um, values I have here, so it's customizable. But the host server was already here. We can see the host server Azure Stack HCI 32. And if I add another virtual machine, I will see it recommends another host. Why? Yes, the host 32 has already workload. 
the host 33 is completely empty. So it recommends me to put this virtual machine there. Let's do it this way. Let's say, okay, this is the VM02. The path is fine. We have the CPU settings. We want to use dynamic memory with one to two gigabytes. We want to connect to the virtual switch, VMs. We have a default isolation mode, the storage. We want to install an operating system from an ISO file we have provided. So same procedure we had before. I will refer to my ISOs folder and I will install again Windows Server 2022. But it's also possible we can install on Windows Server 2019. So it's also compatible. We can install 2016, 2012, or 2012. Uh, remember, we discussed this. We also have extended security updates. We could use Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2. But these two operating systems require generation one virtual machine. This is what we, um, yeah, discussed when we created the first virtual machine here for our cluster. Again, successfully created the virtual machine. And now we have this virtual machine after a few seconds in the list. If we want, don't want to wait so long, we can refresh the list and then the machine should be there. So actually it seems it's still creating. It says successfully created on host 33. But you know, we had this several times in Windows Admin Center that we have to wait short because um, the script is now executed on the target host, but we need a refresh, now it's there. Here we can see the machine, we discussed the settings. Let's start this machine here. Via power, we want to start this machine and we want to connect to this machine we can connect via Windows Admin Center to connect the machine. Oh, it says, ah yeah, sorry, there's actually no operating system on there. Yes, we are actually installing. So I have to um, I have to connect via the RDP, the VM21 is, um, I have to connect via the connect option. So this is use Windows Admin Center to manage this machine. I want to connect to this machine. I want to connect here via Windows Admin Center. I can see, okay, I have to press Control Alt Delete. I want to press any key to start the operating system installation. Now we should see Windows Server 2019. We can also use an AVMA key inside the virtual machine to activate the machine. Um, and I will again use the option, sorry, I don't have a key actually. I can provide this key later. The best choice in my opinion is to use um, the automatic virtual machine activation or purchase the license via Microsoft Azure. This option is today in preview. When it's available, you will uh, hear about the pricing. We will also add this information here in this uh, video learning modules, but today it's in preview. So we don't have costs for this uh, virtual um, of this licensing subscription based on Azure, but what's available to use the OEM licenses and add them in the AVMA settings. So we have this machine, we have this machine. This machine is now a part of the domain. So I could decide to log on here with a different user. So the user is the administrator at the MH demo lab dot de with the password provided there and we can sign into this machine this machine is actually installing this machine is logging in and i can open another tab of the windows admin center here and connect to my cluster and decide to yeah start with some additional administrative actions till these machines have finished their actions. So let's go, go again to the virtual machine section. Because in Windows Admin Center, we have a great feature we don't have in um, Hyper-V Manager today. So we can use the Manage option. Let's take the version VM01. And in Manage, we have an option that's called Clone. We have also an option that is called domain join. Let's check this later for the VM02. 
I want to use the clone action. So I want to have a duplicate of this machine, but not a one-to-one -one copy, uh, because you know such a virtual machine has a name, um, but inside the virtual machine, there's an operating system. And this Windows, uh, Windows Server operating system has a unique ID. And I assume you know it's not an idea, a good idea, to have one-to-one -one copies of machines because they are using all the same ID. So even if I rename them, I will have conflicts inside my network, inside my domain. And this is the reason why we have this clone action. Let's clone the virtual machine 01. We have the information here. This will be a full copy of the virtual machine from the original. Okay, perfect. I want to have the name 30 VM 03. The path should be um, cluster storage volume one VMs. I will have a new subfolder. This is fine. And then here I have an important information. I have already sysprep on my VM. I have already run sysprep on my VM. I mentioned this unique ID of the machine. I can generalize a machine in running sysprep inside the machine. This cloning wizard here runs sysprep on behalf for me. So I don't have to do it manually. So the recommendation is to do it before because actually this complete cloning module is in preview, but I want to show this new stuff to you. So I will clone the machine. And it says here, please keep in mind that the clone process can take from a few minutes to an hour. It can take even longer. It depends on the storage. It depends on the performance. So let's clone this machine. And it says the resource machine, so the source machine, will be rebooted several times. Yes, this is OK for me. So I need a user to authenticate for the virtual machine. Because I've added this machine to the domain, this credentials should work. And now I can continue. Um, alternatively, I can use the local administrator credentials. So keep in mind, this is in preview. So sometimes you are seeing issues here if you have very specific VM configurations. Um, I assume this will be successful here, but it will take a while till the machine is cloned. So this machine has restarted. It's part of the domain. It's now actually cloned. Maybe we will have an issue because I'm connected to this machine. I'm not sure if I ever tried this to do this when I have a remote connectivity to the machine open. Let's see. The uh, second machine is actually still installing. This machine here is cloning, so this works. I could do other things in my Windows Admin Center, but for me, it's great to have control about the status of the different machines. So I will leave these tabs open and open another tab for me for the next options I want to show you to you. So I can um, come back to this window and check what happens there, see what happens there. It's not required to do this. If you say, no, it's fine for me, I always reload my connection. And here you can see it worked so far because I was disconnected on the machine. The machine was um, restarted. Um, this machine is actually installing. Here I can see I have this cloning action. You can always switch. There are a few pages in the Windows Admin Center where you have the information, where you can read the information. Please do not leave this page till the process has finished or something like this. Here we can continue working. I only choose these additional tabs for comfort to be faster when I'm configuring here actions because I don't need always to wait for loading all the sites and coming back and so on. At the top here, I can read help protect your VMs from disasters by using Azure Site Recovery. We have a dedicated module about Azure Stack uh, HCI and Azure Site Recovery within this video series about Azure Stack HCI. It's part of the um, 
deployment specialist, it should be the module 14, configuring Azure Backup and Azure Site Recovery for Azure Stick HCI. So you can have a look there if you are interested in how to configure this. So we have this virtual machine 01, we have the virtual machine 02, actually a clone is created for the virtual machine um, 03. Let's add another new virtual machine here. The next virtual machine is the 30 VM 04, generation 2, and now we can see another host is recommended. The host number one actually has no workload. So if you know System Virtual Machine Manager, you can also use System Center Virtual Machine Manager with the uh, Azure Stick HCI. System Center Virtual Machine Manager is available in version 2022. Um, and this is compatible with Azure Stack HCI 21H2. In System Center Virtual Machine Manager, we have a feature, it's called Intelligent Placement. Intelligent placement really provides a ranking for the hosts where I want to place virtual machines. It's not only recommend this host or this host. Intelligent placement really has a ranking with five stars. If a host has five stars, he's the best host. We have um, four and a half stars, four, three and a half, and so on. Um, this is even more powerful. But System Center Virtual Machine Manager is an extra license. You have to pay for this license. The Windows Admin Center is available for free. It's a download, as we have seen in the module where we installed the Windows Admin Center. So it's great to have this, I would say, intelligent placement light. It's a recommendation. So I don't have to check oh, which host has most available resources. It recommends the host where we actually have the lowest load on. But it's not an, um, an ranking where I can see what's the difference between host one and two here. Okay, let's choose again our default settings we had for these machines. I will configure a very small machine. I have again the virtual switch VMs here. I want to add the storage and I want to install again a virtual machine based on the ISO. Now we have seen we have different options. We already installed uh, from an uh, installation ISO and we also have seen the option to install from an um, from an yeah it's not really installed to clone an existing virtual machine. So as you can see, it's very comfortable to work here. For sure, if you prefer it, you can also use PowerShell to create virtual machines. I mentioned the System Center Virtual Machine Manager. You still can use Hyper-V Manager and Failover Cluster Manager because it's a high available solution. Um, the recommendation would be to use the um, yeah, um, Failover Cluster Manager, but the latest tool with all the new features in there is Windows Admin Center. So I would recommend you to use this one because if you use the traditional tools, you will not get familiar with the Windows Admin Center. And if you know Hyper-V Manager and Failover Cluster Manager, you will see in this live video here how different it is to work here. It's the same action, what happens on the nodes, but the way how to do it is different and you only get familiar with it if you really do it. So let's check what happened on this machine. I want to try to connect to this source machine that was cloned. So let's log in here on the machine. And we can see this machine is not destroyed. It's not misconfigured. It's not resetted. It's exactly the machine I've left. But now I have the situation that I have a clone from it. And this is the machine, virtual machine 03. This machine is actually off. You can see my configuration. The machine here was previously 
renamed in 30VM01. It was part of the domain. This is still the situation. Um, and we can here decide for um, using this machine VM03. Uh, I can select this machine. I can start this machine and I can decide to connect to this machine. So actually the machine is starting, the resources are prepared, the machine is running now. Now I can connect to this machine and now it looks a little bit different compared to the machines I installed manually because you remember I mentioned there was an sysprep action on this machine here. So when I waiting for finalizing here the installation, I will see I don't need this ISO file to boot from. I don't have to copy the files. The virtual hard disk of the machine was copied and it was sysprepped to ensure that I have a um, new um, uh, ID for this machine. So if you have ever worked with such a sysprepped machine, you know, ah, okay, this is a different screen. You have my home country, preferred app language. Maybe I want to choose English here because um, I want to have this um, yeah, international, English, United States. What keyboard layout do you want to have? I prefer the German one. So this matches my keyboard layout I have here. So I can go to next, applying the settings. Now I have to enter a product key here, or I can do this later. I have to accept the licensing terms, different look and feel. Um, compared to all the other machines. And now I can look into this machine. So it was prepared, it is sys prepped, and now I have very easy, very fast, a new virtual machine to work on. So we have seen the manual installation, we have connected to a machine. Here we have this machine 02 that was also manually installed. So you can see it's very comfortable to work this uh, Windows Admin Center, even if you have more machines because you can work with the tabs. So you can also yeah, handle this limitation some customers see because uh, of the web-based architecture and the situation that sometimes it takes a while till the um, single pages are loaded and provided. Um, for the next steps. So here this was our sysprep machine zero, uh, VM03. Zero In the server manager we will see this machine is actually not renamed and it's actually not part um, of a domain. It's in the workgroup MH demo lab but it's not in the domain MH demo lab here. Um, and we have the situation that the machine here yeah, has a new ID inside the machine. So let's check what's also possible here for the configuration. I could choose for this VM01. This is the machine we, um, you, we installed in the first step. In manage, we have a move action. You can move the machine to another host in the cluster. The moving of the virtual machine, here I can see move a VM or its storage to another cluster or server running VMs operate normally during the move. It's a live migration, it's an online action. Um, we have a VM and optional storage. Only storage is coming soon. It's not available here actually. Where do I want to move? failover cluster or a single server. Single server is interesting if you want to move a um, machine outside of this, um, outside of this uh, cluster configuration here. Let's move to another cluster. Here we can see the clusters on my Windows Admin Center. So these are exactly the clusters we have here in our Windows Admin Center configuration, when I choose the servers 
I can do this based on the server configuration. It can be another Azure Stack HCI cluster. This is important. In this move action here, you don't see the traditional Hyper-V hosts. You always see Azure Stack HCI peers. So I want to move this virtual machine from the host 32 to the host 31. It recommends this one because the 31 host has actually the, uh, the, the smallest workload. So let's move the machine and it's an online action. The machine is moved via live migration. So the machine moves, moving the uh, virtual machine, successfully updated the cache for the virtual machine. So here I can see the move act action was already successful. The machine is still running. I didn't have any interruption for the, for the workload. It is the same situation we have in a traditional Hyper-V cluster here in Azure Stack HCI. And here we can see now the machine is on the Azure Stack HCI node 01. So it had was moved from 32 to 01. Okay. So we also have this machine it's the virtual machine 03. Let's select this machine here and ensure that you only have selected one machine. In manage, we discussed replicate Azure site recovery is a dedicated module. We can here work with the checkpoints. For sure, I can export the virtual machine to later import the machine. This is an impossible action if you want to bring this machine offline to another host. And what's also interesting here is we have an option to domain join. Let's check what happens here. Let's check the domain join action. The domain join asks for a name of a domain. It's mhdemolab.de. It asks for a domain user and it asks for the local admin credentials. It's administrator and it's a password. So it's nothing what you couldn't do on a traditional way in logging into the machine and then connecting to the domain. But as you have seen, it takes a while till you open the connection, then connect, log into the machine, change the computer name. So maybe it's a little bit more comfortable to do it directly in the Windows Admin Center, directly via this configuration option here. I already had the success message, successfully joined the machine to the domain. Here in the connection, I can see the virtual machine restarted. This message was there. The system said, this virtual machine will be restarted. And when the machine is back, I will see if everything worked correctly. I should be able to log in to my domain here. Let's check this other user. And let's use the username administrator at mhdemolab.de and my password here. Okay. We had also an action. Let's select the virtual machine 01. When I was in the connection window, there was an option. I can download an RDP file. When the machine is on the network, I can connect via RDP. The connect option is to um, connect via the um, Windows Admin Center web page. There's an option to use Windows Admin Center. You have seen, I clicked this on a previous machine and this machine didn't have any Windows installation there. They could see there's no compatible operating system. Let's try this again here. Use Windows Admin Center. Now I can see start managing this machine with Windows Admin Center. I can see I have here a connectivity to this machine via Windows Admin Center, finalizing the initial route. And now I'm connected via Windows Admin Center to manage this virtual machine here. So I have the overview. Now I'm on the virtual machine layer. I'm not on my Azure Stack HCI hosts. I'm managing here. Here I'm on the host level. These are my Azure Stack HCI hosts. Now I'm on the virtual machine layer inside this host. Yes, in my demos, the hosts are virtual machines. So this is the nested virtual machine layer, but it's the virtual layer, the virtual machines on the, inside this host, where I configure uh, things like, for example, Azure Backup, Azure File Sync, 
um, on top of the virtual machine, on top of this um, virtual instance here. When I switch back to Windows Admin Center to my list, then I can see this virtual machine 01 was added to the Windows Admin Center and is now available here. So if you have virtual machines on an Azure Stack HCI cluster and also on a traditional Hyper-V host, it's not required to add them here all manually. You can also go to your list and choose via Connect, use Windows Admin Center, and this will be done automatically. For sure, in Power, you have things like Save, Shut Down, Turn Off, Reset, Pause. In Manage, we have also the Checkpoint option and the Rename option. Upgrade Configuration version is relevant when we transfer a virtual machine from an previous version of Hyper-V to this latest version, then we have a different configuration version of the machine. And if we want to use all the latest features, we could upgrade this here. Now let's have a short look at the dashboard. We have deployed several machines. Now we have a little workload running here in the dashboard. We can see, okay, now we have three virtual machines running. One machine is off. So we have the default detailed information here about what's happening. In my cluster, I have 13% CPU usage. I have 50% memory used. Um, remember, I only had small nodes with eight gigabytes of memory for demo purposes or a very, very small cluster based on virtual machines. When I'm checking my volumes, I now can see, okay, in my volumes, let's go to the inventory. This volume that initially was completely empty now has 2% consumed. When I check the volumes, I can see, okay, 68, giga, 68 gigabytes are in there. These are my three or four virtual machines. I have the full redundancy because I decided for the three-way mirror here in this three-way cluster. And we have the situation that in the virtual machines, the situation is a little bit different. It doesn't start with the summary. We have in, typically on the other pages, it starts with the inventory. This was a feedback to the Windows Admin Center team that usually want to have an overview where you see the memory pressure, memory demand, and so on, what's configured. I already have shown to you that you can select the volumes with the volume picker, what should be displayed and in which order. And if you click to the summary, then you have the summary page of the virtual machines. So it's a different order than we have on the dashboard and the servers, for example. And here I can see detailed information. How many VMs are running? How many are off, saved, paused? I can see all the alerts, the CPU usage based on the virtual machine, the memory assigned based on the machine, the IOPS the machines produce, including some history information here. And, um, when we go back to the inventory, now we also have detailed information about the um, yeah, configuration of the virtual machine. Let's take the virtual machine 01. We have the properties, it's running, we have the virtual computer name, we have the operating system inside the virtual machine, we have checkpoints, we have related the related objects like network adapters, like servers where it's actually running, the performance, so really, really detailed information here. 